information to your um, to your physician. Okay, so the next question here, um, Gail, is there a correlate? Gail Smith asks, is there a correlation between long time use of carbidopa levodopa and the onset of dyskinesia? I know it does not appear in all cases, but I recently saw a webinar that included this was a myth and that dyskinesia was a symptom of Parkinson's progression, not related to meds. So according to you know what I know and what I've seen at this Congress, dyskinesia is definitely highly correlated to long-term use of levodopa. And there's a term called levodopa-induced dyskinesia or LID. And Honestly, there was um, a great speaker um, from, I'm not sure, actually, Seoul, I think, and um, he talked about this concept of uh, levodopa-induced dyskinesia, and he explained it in depth, and it was a lot of, honestly, it was a lot of um, medical jargon and a lot of research jargon and a lot of stuff that really doesn't hit home for most of you. So in a summary... Over time, when you're, um, let's say you're not exercising and your levodopa levels are starting to decline like this, they start to go down. I hope that's a down angle for all of you involved. Um, you know, Parkinson exercise um, protects your brain, so your decline, you're either here, you know, you're not getting any worse, or you um, are slowly um, you're slowing down the progression of that, that decline. But essentially, when you have Parkinson's and your levodopa levels are dropping, then you have to take more and more medication to get back up to this kind of functioning level. So at first, you might only take a little bit of a levodopa, and then as that slope goes down, you have to take a little more to get back up to your normal levels, and then a little more. And then you can see how this is a bigger dose of levodopa. I hope this is making sense to you guys. A bigger dose of levodopa. Um, over time to get back up to your optimal level. And as that levodopa dosage increases, your risk for dyskinesias increase because of the, the impact that that medication has on the synapses in your brain. Um, so that's the, sh the short version of that. And if you want a more in-depth explanation, um, I'm happy to give it. But the answer is yes, Gail, that over time, the more L-dopa you have in your system, the more likely you are to have dyskinesia. So they went through different risk factors for developing dyskinesia over time. And this is really interesting to me. Um, you know, mainly your risk for dyskinesia increases with dopaminergic treatment. So higher dosages for longer increases your risk. And I'm not saying any of this to you guys to freak you out or to make you sad. Um, Honestly, it's to emphasize how important it is to be exercising so that you don't have to take as much levodopa over time. Um, but the first risk factor that um, increases your risk of developing dyskinesia is being a younger age at onset. So that's pretty simple. You're, if you're younger when you have the diagnosis, you're going to be taking Parkinson's medications for longer compared to someone who is diagnosed five, six years after you, seven, eight years after you. Um, another risk factor is being lower in weight. So they explained this as potentially when you have less body mass and you're taking the Parkinson's medications, it just has more potent of an impact on your system. And, um, you know, that leaves you at higher risk for becoming dyskinetic over time. And finally, females, um, women have a higher chance of developing dyskinesia over time than men do. And they... Um, correlate this with hormonal um, differences between genders and your, you may actually consider doing some hormonal treatment, hormonal therapy to reduce your risk of dyskinesia. They didn't talk about that in depth, um, but if you need some more resources for that, I've got some um, people I can send to you. So the main message there as far as, the main message overall that I want you guys to take home is two, twofold. The first thing is if you're having dyskinesia, Listen and see which type of dyskinesia you are, you think you may be having, or better yet, record your symptoms based off of when you take your medication, if you feel like you're in an on period or an off period, so that you can take that information to your physician and have them adjust your medications. The second and most important.